السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلم تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ما بعد يقول الله تعالى ولا تهنوا ولا تحزنوا وأنتم الأعلون إن كنتم مؤمنين إن يمسسكم قرح فقد مس القوم قرح مثله وتلك الأيام نداولها بين الناس وليعلم الله الذين آمنوا ويتخذ منكم شهداء والله لا يحب الظالمين وليمحص الله الذين آمنوا ويمحق الكافرين أم حسبتم أن تدخلوا الجنة أم حسبتم أن تدخلوا الجنة ولما يعلم الله الذين جاهدوا منكم ويعلم الصابرين Brothers and sisters, before I translate these ayat, I want to first prime this discussion with circumstances that relate to these to the, the, the following passages. And that is that we are in a state, um, as an ummah, where oppression is rampant against the ummah of the Prophet Now I don't know if you're keeping up with the news, but what's happening in India with our with our sisters, the ban of the hijab, it's, it's not just the hijab. It's more or less a ban of the way of life of Islam in India, as a minority. Despite the fact that there's a hundred million plus Muslims in India, they're still a minority. And they're facing the oppression that they're facing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them victory over their opponents. But this prompts a question. Especially with uh, a young generation growing up that doesn't necessarily see this adversity. When you grow up seeing adversity, there's a different point of view that you view life in. And so I'm not worried about that group of people. I'm worried about a group of young ones who grew up without facing adversity, without facing challenges. And when they hear the news, they find it hard to empathize. They find it hard to connect with what's happening because they didn't experience it. How you judge something is based off how you imagine. And so the question is brought up. If this ummah is so great, if this ummah is the chosen ummah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're the best nation that was brought forth to mankind. If it's so amazing, why is it in such shambles? Why is it wherever you look in the corners of the earth, you find that there is a state of oppression? Whether that's in India, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them, give them victory. Whether it's in China and what's happening to our brothers and sisters in China. Whether it's in Palestine, whether it's in Afghanistan, whether it's in France and Sweden, and even other parts of the earth. Wherever you look, you find a state of oppression that Muslims are, are facing. And so if this is true, why is this, the, why is this the state? And how can we answer this question? First of all, 
As Muslims, we don't say this without a feeling of emotion. We don't say this without a feeling of passion. The Prophet ﷺ praises this ummah where he says that it's like a body. When one of it feels pain, the rest of it stays up at night because it can't sleep. Imagine you have a small toothache, your whole body stays awake because of a small tooth. And yet, the whole body feels that agony and that pain. That's the example of this ummah. That wherever it is on earth, the entire ummah feels that pain. So we feel the pain of our brothers and sisters. We feel it. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to aid them and be with them. But at the same time, we want to understand and tap into the wisdom. Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala test this ummah as such? And has this circumstance that we see today, is this the first time for this century, if you would, if you were to take it as from the 1900s until now, this century, is this the only time in which this ummah was tested? The answer is clearly no. The ummah has been tested for a long time. And it has not been unified since the time of the khilaf. And so it's had its issues. It's faced its challenges. Why does it have these challenges? Why doesn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just make, make the Muslims kings of the land and spread justice and, and it's good happily ever after? Why is there such darkness in this world? The answer, brothers and sisters, is found in the story of the Prophet in the battle of in the battle of Uhud. Excuse me. After the, they face defeat. And after the Prophet's own skull was opened, and his helmet pierced his cheek. And after wiping the blood off of his face in that defeat that they had faced, when the believers disobeyed and went down from the mountain, and Khalid ibn Walid, before he was a Muslim, he circled around and he brought defeat to the Muslims. In that moment, there was a state of despair. There was a state of uh, hopelessness. Right? When, a person, when a person faces the loss, they lose their sense of confidence. They were so confident after Badr. And all of a sudden, Uhud came in and they lost that state of confidence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He revealed a set of ayat, encouraging the believers and providing them with that wisdom as to why these challenges are brought forth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا Don't feel despair. Don't be sad. وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنُونَ You're better as long as you're believers. As long as you are believers, whichever state that you're in is going to be khair for you. As the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, عَجَبَ الْيَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ Amazing is the state of affairs of the believer. In any state, he's good. He's in a good state. He has something beneficial for him. If something good happens, then he is thankful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards him for it, and that is good for him. And if some difficulty comes to him, and he's patient over it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards him and that is good for him. And so in any state, the believers are at a higher status because they have a sense of patience and tawakkul and reliance on their Creator. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it from them. If you have been afflicted with a calamity, and in the battle of Uhud, 70 believers were killed. 70 Muslims were killed in the battle. If you have been afflicted with such a calamity, they also, Quraysh, has been afflicted with a similar calamity. Meaning they lost 70 in the battle of Badr. And so don't look at just the negative side right now. Take a step back and zoom out. And look at the whole situation. Those who are in uh, stock market know about this. Where they say, when in doubt, you zoom out. So you see the bigger picture. You see where the trend is actually going. You don't just look at that daily loss. You take a step back and you look at things a little bigger. That helps give you a longer view of where you're trying to go. And that is the teaching here. You have been afflicted with something, they've been afflicted with something. Why would you lose your confidence? Those are the days they rotate between people. One day you have power, the next day you don't. One day you have money, the next day you don't. That is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests people. Uh, And He puts them over one another in different ways. Each of you was made as a test for one another. How are you going to be patient? How are you going to face that situation with perseverance and reliance or with doubts and you know, throwing a tantrum and saying, why me, why me? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, not make us from them. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the wisdom behind 
وتلك الايام نداولها بين الناس فليعلم الله الذين امنوا. الله سبحانه وتعالى wants to know who is the true believer. Times of difficulty befall a nation to separate between the one who truly believes and the one who says he believes but doesn't have it in his heart. And so at a time of adversity, at a time in which the difficulty is heightened, the believers they say, the believers, when they're faced with a challenge, they say their, their iman increases. Their submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases. And they say, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised us. We're going to hold true to our belief. We're not going to lose sight of the bigger picture. And that is that this dunya is fani. This dunya is bound to expire. And that there's something greater beyond that. As for the person who doesn't have belief in his heart, then at the time of difficulty, you start to see that they expose themselves. And they start to see this short-sightedness and the disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects us from this. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to know who is the believer from who, who truly believes and who is the one who just says they believe. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who truly believe. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to take some of you as martyrs. A shaheed is a high status. These four types of categories are the highest levels humans can reach. Prophets and siddiqeen, those who affirm the prophethood and stand with them truthfully. Like Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu is a siddiq. And the martyrs, those who give their life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they give up everything. Their beating heart, they give it up for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so they have a high status. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them this opportunity to present the best of themselves that they can be rewarded with a life after a life. Don't think that those who are killed the way of Allah that they are dead. Rather, they are alive in, in, in Jannat al Naim, as the Prophet mentioned that they are in a state of bliss until the Day of Judgment. And on the Day of Judgment, they have an even bigger bliss. And so they are given a high status based off of the test that they're faced. And so they're caught between a crossroads. Either they're given height and, and dignity in this world through, through persevering over their adversity, or if they lose throughout the process, they're given victory in the Akhir. And so it's victory after victory for the believers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like those who are oppressors. And another reason is to purify. To purify something. To filter it out. To filter out the, perhaps we have some sins. We piled some things on our hearts. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us with adversity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us with difficulty. He takes away a little bit of the luxuries of the dunya so that we return to him. And in a moment of need, you find people truly clinging on to their creator. And so in that moment, it's a purification process for them to wake them up out of the slumber of this life and its luxuries and its deception so that they can connect to their creator. To purify the believers. As for those who champion this belief, then it makes their situation clear. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that, you know, regarding the believer, the difficulty that he goes through, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Ma wa la wasab. The believer doesn't go through any hardship or difficulty or sickness, wa la hammin wa la hazan, or uh, sorrow or depression. He doesn't go through any of these difficulties. Wa la adan wa la gham or any pain, or any harm, even a prick of a thorn that touches him, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives him for it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives some of his sayyats. And so a purification process is found in the fitan that come down on this earth. When our brothers and sisters in India are going through what they're going through, first of all, it's a testament to their strength of dealing with uh, the past however many years, two centuries, of oppression that they've been going through, and it's a testament to what they've done as a minority in that country. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward their efforts. And it's also to show their strength of character. 
despite the adversity, they say, no, we're going to wear the hijab. No, we're going to stand true to our faith. Regardless of what propaganda is spread, regardless of what policies are in place, we're going to fight for our rights. And so it shows their character, it shows their strength. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them. And if certain people go through an even higher level of fitna, then it only shows even more of their character. Who was the one that was tested the most? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he says, as he's going through the agonies of death, he's saying that a person is tested to the level in which their, 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 their spirituality and their taqwa is. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that the anbiya are tested double than that of a normal righteous person. And he would swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the agonies of death are severe. And what he went through was very difficult, alayhi salatu wa salam. And yet he persevered. Now there is another secret that when we dive into this question, we also find that the wisdom behind tribulations and difficulties is also to see which of the believers have a truly long view of where they're trying to go. Those who are truly sincere would overcome the mountain that's before them because they see something at the end of the road. They see something that others don't see. They can see further away. And that's found in the example of the Prophet when he was in Mecca. And the believers, they were tortured in Mecca. They were coated in iron. They were put in the, in, in, in the desert. They were, the rocks were placed on them. They went through difficulty. And yet they still asked the Prophet when is the victory coming? When is it happening, Ya Rasul? And the Prophet told them there will come a time where the person will travel from place to place and he won't be worried of anything except a wolf eating its sheep, eating his sheep. That's the only thing he's afraid of. Meaning he's not afraid of people harming him or anything like that. And he ended with a phrase, But you are a people that rush for some greatness. You want the good immediately. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us to show which of us are those who can see furthest away. And that is the hallmark of a leader, and that is the hallmark of someone who truly has reliance, true reliance, on their Creator, Allah Jalla Jalla. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it from So brothers and sisters, when we look at the dire situation, don't rush to conclusions. Don't rush to conclusions saying, well, you know what, as, as other people have said, you know, God, you know, he, you know, he gave up on it. How, how can we say that? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ma rabbika wa ma Allah has not left you, nor does he hate you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed that to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes, this dunya is difficult. Yes, this dunya has challenges. Yes, this dunya is a place of work. It's a place of effort. It's a place in which you don't relax. It's a place where the fitan of shaitan and his shubuhat and his shahawat and all the things that he brings forth before you. It's a time to prove yourself. And once you've proven yourself in the next life, that's when you can relax. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make that a time of relaxation for us. Brothers and sisters, as for our sisters that are going through this difficulty, there are certain things that we should, we should, uh, we should do. One is obviously raising awareness in the capabilities that we have. And I'm sure there are many rallies that are, being, that are taking place at the moment and calls for, for you know, political mobilization. And you can speak to those who know more about it than I. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless their efforts. And, give, and, and make their efforts fruitful. But then there's a deeper issue. One is that we have to teach the concept of hijab to our family members. Boys and girls, they have to understand this value. They have to understand what it actually means. Because it's one of the sha'a'ir of Islam. It's one of the banners of Islam. As guys, you know, it's easier for us. You know, you, you walk around with a, with a hat and some canes and you're good to go. No one will know if you're truly Muslim or not. They'll know it's probably your race, but they won't know if you're Muslim. It doesn't say anything on your chest Muslim. As for the sisters, they can't escape it. Wherever they are, they are known and branded as Muslims based off of the banner that they've wrapped around their heads. And so, to, to provide them with the strength from both our brothers and our sisters, our younger generation, we have to teach them the importance of Islam, where it comes from and why it's so significant, and why it matters, and why one of the branches of Iman that is rooted in the heart and manifests in the physical things that we have, as the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned, 
that haya is one of the branches of iman, and that hijab is one of the highest uh, uh, exhibits of haya. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, fill our, 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 our character with haya. And so teaching our, our younger generation the importance, the actual virtues of hijab, and not just looking at it as a cultural uh, inheritance, that you're just doing this because you're Arab, or you're just doing this because you're from uh, Southeast Asia, or this is how it's supposed to be done. No, it's an ibadah. It's a form of worship in which a person does it seeking the thawab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so if someone does something for the sake of thawab, then there must be a wisdom behind it. And so explore the wisdoms behind that. Just as how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlighted why salah is important. In the salah that salah uh, prohibits indecency and, and falsehoods. And so that wisdom is highlighted to give you a reason behind it. The same goes with the hijab or the ibadah. That we have to understand its virtue. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aid us in that. And the other thing for the brothers. Um, when we see a sister that perhaps is in the workplace or perhaps you know, uh, you, know you walk by them at, at the shops. The sisters sometimes when they're alone, they go through difficulties where someone may do something against them. They may pull off the hijab. They may say something slanderous against them. We all know this. It's a reality that we've all experienced in Allah how to give uh, protection and fortitude to our sisters. As Muslims, we stand together. We stand together. We don't ignore the situation of others. And so for the brothers, when you see a sister, say assalamu alaikum in a way that's professional, courteous, and, 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 and presentable. And it's something that is out of out of a place of genuine genuine kindness, not in a place where you're trying to do something haram. Well, you come in and you just say, Salaamu Alaikum. Let her know that there's a Muslim in your vicinity. So that if something happens, you are the one that comes in and protects her. You're the one that comes in and helps her. Hasn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ The believing men and the believing women, they are guardians, they are allies of one another. They support one another, they protect one another. And so, if you see somebody that is obviously Muslim, whether it's a sister wearing a hijab or a brother wearing a robe, if that ever happens, say assalamu alaykum. That salam, first of all, is a ibadah. And second, you're giving that person a signal that, hey, you have somebody here that will help. And I'll help you. Help one another in goodness and kindness. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give unity to this ummah and help our brothers and sisters in India, help our brothers and sisters in, 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 in China and Palestine and wherever they may be facing their oppression that they're facing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give victory to this ummah. قل قولي هذا وصلت الله ولكم النساء المسلمين فاستغفروه انه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله حق حمده واشهد ان لا اله الا الله الصادق في وعده شهادة تنزق الها في ظلمة لحده وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد يقول الله تعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك يا مولانا سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات اللهم أبلم لهذه الأمة أمر رسل معز فيه أهل الطاعة ويهتدى فيه أهل المعصية ويؤمر فيه بالمعروف وينهى فيه عن المنكر اللهم اغفر لحينا وميتنا وشاهدنا وغائبنا وصغيرنا وكبيرنا وذكرنا وأنثانا اللهم من أحيته منا فأحيه على الإسلام ومن توفيته منا فتوفه على الإيمان عباد الله رحمة الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان والإساء والقربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر الله يعلم ما تصنعون الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله
الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا ولا تهنوا ولا تحزنوا وأنتم الأعلون إن كنتم مؤمنين إن يمسسكم قرح فقد مس القوم قرح مثله وتلك الأيام نداولها بين الناس وليعلم الله الذين آمنوا ويتخذ منكم شهداء والله لا يحب الظالمين وليمحص الله الذين آمنوا ويمحق الكافرين أم حسبتم أن تدخلوا الجنة ولما يعلم الله الذين جاهدوا منكم ولما يعلم الله الذين جاهدوا منكم ويعلم الصابرين الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله الله الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين من الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفر إنه كان توابا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم إن شاء الله just a couple of minutes to bring you up to speed on uh, several uh, programs that are happening إن شاء الله so tomorrow is a special day we have uh, reservations made for the families to go to ice skating uh, at 1.30 in the afternoon uh, more details about that are on the website and on our newsletter uh, registration for that closes tonight, so please make sure that uh, you let us know if that's going to be uh, something of interest. Uh, next week, inshallah, there's uh, a hike in the morning. Uh, there's also a, a special program at Georgia Tech for professional growth that the RCM Alhamdulillah is able to sponsor. So if you have uh, young kids that are interested in learning more about uh, becoming more professional, please uh, take a look at that on our website as well and on our Georgia Tech uh, MSA. And then uh, a couple more requests. Uh, we have a survey that's going on to learn more about the best way to communicate with the community. So please fill that out. Uh, there's a big QR code on the way out that you can scan with your phone and let us know your preferences. We're also trying to figure out if there's any interest in doing a Hajj and a Umrah trip. Hajj, uh, as you know, the timing is uh, set. Umrah is probably going to be more of a uh, end of year winter break kind of family uh, opportunity, inshallah. So please go and uh, also let us know if you'd be interested in, in that. And then please stay in touch with us on the website. There's plenty of opportunities in March, inshallah. And please uh, try to join us for evenings and uh, pleasure for all the different programs that uh, Imam Ibrahim is leading. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.